Together in Battle is a new procedural tactical RPG developed by Sinister Design that focuses on team building and deep tactical combat. It released on Steam Early Access today, though I did receive an early copy of the game for the purposes of putting this review together. That said, as always, my opinions are my own, and my goal is to provide you with honest feedback about the game and whether it's worth your time. So let's jump into the details. Starting off with the story, you are a powerful telepath that has come to the country of Dese to raise a team of experienced fighters to help a group of rebels fight the Vibra Mining Company and free its slave labor force. You'll raise this team by fighting in the arena. Along the way, you'll run into a deep story of intrigue involving the Kingdom of Dese and its ruler. As far as stories go, this one gives you reason enough for what you are doing, but as events unfold further into the game, the story does leave you with some what will happen next moments, which I was pleasantly surprised to find in an indie title focused on procedural paddles. Something else that surprised me too was that the opening cutscene setting up your reason for coming to Dese is voice acted. This was a nice touch, and though this is the only voice acting so far, it leaves me with hope for more in the future. Briefly before we get into the team building, I just mentioned the procedural battles, but I want to make clear that not every battle is procedurally generated. The arena battles are, but set story pieces are not. Critical story battles are handcrafted, which I think sets up a nice blend of content that helps keep things interesting. Now when it comes to team building and management, there is a well fleshed out system here with some interesting mechanics. At the start of the game you will use your starting funds to recruit a team of at least 6 fighters from a procedurally generated list. The cost of each of these fighters and their salary will vary based on their skills, equipment, and class. You can then start taking these fighters into the arena to earn more money, or stop by the shop to equip them with better gear. Each fighter you hire has a morale value that will affect their combat effectiveness. High morale will result in higher energy regen and attack power, while low morale will lead to less attack power and even the possibility of that fighter quitting your team. There are multiple factors that affect morale, including interactions between team members, a character being downed in the arena, not being able to pay the team on payday, running out of food, or even the death of a teammate. To bring morale back up yourself, you can hold a gathering, give out bonuses, or even grant vacation time to your fighters. This then brings us to the character interactions in camp. Sinister Design has built a pretty robust system of procedural dialogue that your fighters can have with each other. These conversations grow from simple introductions to discussing backgrounds to even the possibility of two characters falling in love. Granted, these conversations can come off as a little odd sometimes because of the procedural nature, but they still provide some interesting flavor to the game. As far as affecting the actual game mechanics though, most of these conversations have no effect. The familiarity that characters gain with one another just opens up new conversations for them to have. That said, there are a couple of things that can happen that will affect the character's morale, such as being rejected while asking someone out, or getting into arguments. But now it's time to talk about the actual gameplay. Upon starting a new game, you are given three difficulty options to choose from, and then asked if you want to play in roguelike mode, where you only have one save slot that auto-saves, or in save scumming mode, where you can save in multiple slots and whenever you want. From there, the game allows us to pick our starting team and takes us to the daily options where we can spend the day either in the arena, visiting the shop, recruiting more units, or training a unit. Visiting the arena for the first time leads us through a short but decent tutorial to get us started. The actual battles themselves can be very interesting as not only do you gain some pretty cool abilities on your characters, ranging from standard bow and sword attacks to telekinetic abilities, but the battlefields are built to take advantage of these. Every object is destructible and most maps include water, fire, or some other hazard to push and pull your opponents into. For instance, I had a blast using a telekineticist to lock down an enemy and repeatedly pull them into the water. You can also damage enemies by pushing or pulling them into each other. On the flip side though, the AI can do this to you as well. Speaking of the AI, for the most part it was surprisingly competent and can give you a real challenge. The AI does a good job of capitalizing on push and pull opportunities, so you need to be careful about your unit placement. The use of buffs and debuffs can be really useful too. A lot of abilities will do both damage and inflict a debuff like immobilize, stun, or poison. While some won't deal damage but inflict a status effect and then allow you to still use another ability afterwards. This opens up a bunch of different tactical options depending on the situation. Some buffs can even cancel debuffs and vice versa. 
For instance, if a unit has become softened, weakening their defense, you can use Harden to cancel out the debuff and strengthen the unit's armor instead. Together in Battle does a good job of allowing status effects to play a key role in your strategy. Moving on now to the leveling system, for the most part this happens on its own. You won't be picking stats each time to increase on each character, but you will occasionally get the option to choose the next ability or stat increase. Sometimes a character will ask you while in camp what they should work on. These choices usually include a couple of different stat increase options or abilities. Whichever you choose will be added on the character's next level up. The leveling isn't completely random though. Each character gains stats each level up and will increase in the stats that matter more to them more often. For instance, a mentalist will increase in psi power and energy faster than in health, but an axe fighter will increase in health and strength more than in energy. In addition, sometimes a unit can gain proficiency in a stat, which will result in that stat growing even faster. Once a unit reaches level 20, you are given the option of two different class promotions that can improve the unit in different ways. For instance, a crossbowman can become an arbalist who focuses on explosive attacks, or a sharpshooter who gains greater accuracy, range, and damage. So now that we've covered the gameplay, let's talk briefly about the graphics and the sound, and then get into some of the issues I've had with the game. So graphically, this is an indie title, so we have indie graphics. The style may be a little different than what we're used to, but the environments and character sprites look good and are well designed. The animations and effects for the different attacks look great too, and are better than you might expect from a one-man studio. As far as sound design, there is a really good soundtrack to the game that goes well with the whole arena fight theme, and there is just enough variety in the tracks to keep you from getting tired of hearing the same music too much. The sound effects are all of good quality too, and really help bring the game to life. This all sounds pretty good so far, but what issues might the game have that could give you pause? Let me start by reminding us all that this title is releasing in early access, meaning there are going to be bugs to be worked out, rebalancing to be done, and content to be added. So to start this section of the video off, the procedural generation of the arena battle's terrain is really good in my opinion but the enemies you're given can result in some fights that are relatively easy right before a fight that can be almost painfully difficult. Granted, I played on the base difficulty of challenging where the AI is competent and characters may die after falling in battle, so overall I never lost a fight, but I did lose characters. So when I say painfully difficult, I mean that in so much as keeping all your characters up throughout a fight. On the easier difficulty, this would be much less a concern, as you won't lose downed characters. The biggest effect on difficulty coming from losing these characters, though, comes in the form of big hits to the morale of the rest of your team. In one of my playthroughs, I lost several characters in the arena, and then several more when their morale dropped to the bottom, and they quit my team. So needless to say, some rebalancing may be needed either in enemy spawns or maybe in more ways to improve team morale. On a positive note though, the developer has told me that a custom difficulty feature is planned in the future, and this alone could solve some of these issues. The next thing on the list of woes is the training feature. One of the options you're given each day is to train a unit. By spending some money and leaving your unit to train for a few days, you can bump up a stat of your choosing or even reclass them. The cost though, in both gold and time, can be prohibitive, and it never seemed like a good idea to do it to me. You see, every two weeks you have to pay the salaries of your fighters, and to have enough money to do this and still buy improved equipment from time to time, you need to fight in the arena at least every couple of days. So spending money to train a unit and then not having access to that unit for several days can really hurt you in the long run. I think overall the cost of salaries and training need to be adjusted, or maybe the timeline expanded so you have more time to earn the money that you need. Next is team morale. I briefly mentioned this already, but team morale can be hard to manage, especially if someone on your team dies. At first I had a hard time managing morale because you can only really up the morale of one character at a time, and to do it costs you either money or giving them vacation, which makes them unusable for the length of the vacation time that you gave them. You do have the option to hold a gathering, which improves everyone's morale by two, but you need 50 food to do this. Holding gatherings, though, is how I managed to keep morale higher on my final playthrough. It takes some planning, but overall it is cheaper and more effective. Honestly, I just think there are too many events that bring morale down, and not enough that bring it up. 
For instance, if no one decides to clean up the camp, everyone takes a negative one morale hit. You don't get morale boosts for winning battles as far as I can tell. I think adding something like this could go a long way towards fixing this issue. Finally, there were multiple bugs that I encountered, but I have reached out to Sinister Design and he is actively working on fixing these before launch. He has already fixed a few of them by the time of my writing this review. None of the bugs I encountered were game breaking, as in I didn't lose any progress, but there were a couple where I had to exit the game and reload it to get back to playing. So is Together in Battle worth picking up, despite these issues? I am going to say yes, for a couple of reasons. First off, this is an early access release, meaning the price is relatively low at $15 and is currently on sale for less than that during this launch week, meaning this is a great time to get in early and be able to give feedback to Sinister Design as he continues to build the game. The second reason is that the developer has been very responsive in fixing bugs, responding to questions, and taking suggestions. I've seen this in my own interactions with him and also in the forums on Steam. Sinister Design seems to be very community oriented and odds are if you send him a suggestion about his games, he will personally respond to you. I think Together in Battle is a good indie title currently and has the potential to be a great one in the future. The bite-sized battles of the arena are great for short play sessions for those who don't have hours to sit at the computer, and the procedural recruitment pool and battlefields add in a lot of replayability as having different team compositions really changes how you play the game. Overall, the current version of the game has about 10 hours of game time to complete a single playthrough. Personally, I put in nearly 20 hours before writing this review, which included one full playthrough and two partials trying out different team combinations. Please remember to give the video a like and consider supporting me by hitting the subscribe button, as it takes a lot of time to put these reviews together for you, and your support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to see my review of Sinister Design's other game, Telepath Tactics Liberated, you can watch that one right here. As always, thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and keep on gaming.